welcome to my broadcast. In today's broadcast, I am going to be making a soap, and I call it Silk and Shea Face to Feet Body Soap. Um, so let me get started here. So in my container, I have in here, of course, my lye, sodium hydroxide, my distilled water, which I always use in and soap and um, cold process soap. And inside here, I have tussis silk. So a little bit about tussis silk. If you're not familiar with the term, of course, it comes from the silkworm. And what, what does it do for the soap? Um, it gives the soap a silky feeling. It gives the soap a little bit of extra shine. And some people believe that it also increases lab. So in my pot here, I am going to be working at room temperature. I have my melted butters, my, my warm oils. And so for this broadcast, I am going to be using 35% um, shea butter. This is an unscented soap, and I decided to make it unscented for several reasons. Um, I love the way that shea smells. And the other thing that's really important is that it's good for those who have super sensitive skin. There are many who cannot use um, there are many who can't use the whatchamacallit, they can't use um, scented soaps, uh, it, may, it irritates them, whether it's essential oils or fragrance oils. And just think about this, say you were going on a job interview, and in many interviews they will tell you do not wear perfumes. This is a great soap to use if you're going on a job interview. And I'm going to give that a quick stir. That's my first thing. Um, I'm just checking my temperature here. And I'm at 78. That's low. This is at 77. It's almost a, um, both of them are almost exactly 78. A little low there, but it's okay. Now I'm going to add in my coconut milk powder. And I'm going to give it a good swish. two ounces of additional water and the reason I'm adding the water is because of evaporation so I lost two ounces of water during evaporation so I want to keep my um, recipe at a constant now I'm going to add in my lye water and I'm expecting my soap to move fast but, um, still at emulsification we don't have a yet I am now going to move to my other blender because it is moving really, really slow. Even though I have a water discount and I'm using my slow stick beater, stick blender, because this stick blender is really, it's old. I think I bought this stick blender when I first started. Um, uh, I, think it's, I think it's almost at the end of its life cycle. And we're there. So it's just a light trace here, and it's just thick enough so I can pour it and I can just have some control. Taking it to zero, and let me see if I can do my first move without spilling it too bad. Ooh, isn't that creamy looking, y'all? Stop. Right there. Just for now, I'm at 44. I don't want to get it too close to the top. And the reason is I want to make a little design, but I don't want it to buckle. So I'm at 48 ounces. I think I'm going to take it to 50 ounces. I'll be good with that. Can you see the trace? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? 
and we are at 50. That's my first one. Okay, so I'm at 40. Ooh, it is lumping up. So it is in full gear. Take it down to 51. Let me see where I am. Just about. So it tells me I can do like 52 ounces per mold. So for the other ones, I'm going to add in two ounces each. And by then, hopefully I'll have enough stiffness in the soap to do a top of the spoon swirl. And, not perfect, but I still got a little swirl on my top, so I'm happy with that. If it, it needs to be a little thicker, I'll leave it there, left this side. Now, will a figure eight look better? I don't know. Let's try this one here. The figure eight looks better. I'll clean that up with my figure eight. So here, here, hmm. Oh, I think I like. So here's the top of the spoon swirl. And here, can you guys see the spoon swirl on the figure eight? Which one do you like the best? I think I like the figure eight best. I think it's nicer. And then just a little bit down the middle. Oops, lost my figure eight. And there we go. Oh, I like this top. I think it's kind of nice. I might have to come back and redo that one. We look at this baby here. Let's flatten her out. And that's it. And let's do a figure eight. Okay, that's good. Start the other direction. Okay. Lastly, sit down the middle. dust and I have four lovely absolute aren't they lovely absolutely lovely shea and silk soaps their smell is really clean you can smell it now it's very clean and very fresh smelling it's great for those who have sensitive skin or those who don't like fragrance oils or essential oils it's great for those who um just want something different. I sometimes like to wear, um, use a non-fragrance oak, especially soap, especially if I'm going into a meeting and um, there's a lot of people, and, a, and there's a lot of people who are sensitive to smells. So um, I try to be conscious of my colleagues when I do go into the office, when I am going into a very big meeting, because I don't want somebody sitting next to me sniffling because, um, they are irritated by my fragrance. And sometimes, you know, I just like it. I love my soaps. I love making soap. I have such a good time. And I think that, and I know that I am so blessed that you guys came to hang out with me. I will see you on Wednesday night. Bye-bye. Bobby, I saw your question from the Blast broadcast. I have to look up the um, size of the molds, but I will, I will post it over in 
the other Facebook after this broadcast today. Now, that came with loose kind of nice. And um, this comes a loose kind of nice. A little bit sticky there, but I'm not going to worry about that. Let's see if, how it's going to unmold. I feel the looseness already. I didn't even have to push it. Oh, I love when, when it comes out like that. Um, very, very, very little residue, which means I am going to now. I have a little line mark there. So what I want to do is take about a half an inch off of both sides. The soap smells so clean. It's great for those who are have super, who are very sensitive. It's still a little bitty soft. I could put an indent there, but not too bad. I'll lay the soap down flat here. Put it against my little half mark line. And did my cut. I stuck there for a second. Ooh, that's where I just got stuck. But that's not bad. I gotta pay more attention to that little space on the corner there. It's gonna mess up my other one. I'll figure it out. I'll just uh, bevel that off. Do the other side, half inch. We stand it up tall. And take my time here. And isn't that pretty? Didn't it come out nice? Now what will happen over time, this is gonna get darker, but that is very nice. It would stay looking like this with that beautiful yellow in the, in the center. But no, it's going to, it's going to, it is going to change. And I know that. And here's the top, very pretty. And a better view of the actual, I'm trying to figure out, well, does this soap will need beveling? It is so clean. The cut is so clean. And this is going to be the last one. Let's see how many bars we got. This is the last cut, but we see what we're getting from a weight perspective. This was the last one I think I cut. This one's the first one. So I'm getting a um, 5.45 ounces, which is not bad. I figure after water evaporation, I'll get a bar between 4.75 and 5 ounces. But I'm not really expecting a lot of water evaporation because I did a big discount. And this one, 5.7. So yeah, I'll probably get between, maybe I even want to get a 5 ounce bar. Who knows? We'll find out in a few weeks. So there we go. I want to say thank you so much for watching. Vanessa here from Deganya Aromatics. Natural products for the three dimensions of you. You are spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body that is fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you again for joining. May you be abundantly blessed. Stay safe. Bye-bye.